Are you looking to record your own music and build a home studio in the year 2024? Well, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to step-by-step -step describe the gear you need to start recording your own music and how you can do it for an affordable price of under $500 and even you could do it for under $350, but I'll show you exactly how to build your home studio, what gear you need so you can get started doing the same. So let's get into the video here. If you don't know my channel, this channel is called Make The Music. It's for home studio musicians who wanna get into making their mu own music, recording it and releasing it to the world. I do two videos a week on that. So you should like and subscribe to the channel down below and pick up my guide called the Home Studio Gear Guide. That is a gear guide that gives you everything you need in your home studio and all for affordable prices. So you should pick that up in the description box down below. But let's get into the video so I can give you everything you need to start making music in your home studio. So this video is gonna start out with a couple assumptions. One is that you have some sort of computer to work with. And I go over this in the Home Studio Gear Guide, but I'm assuming you have a PC or a MacBook that's you know somewhat recent. It doesn't have to be top of the line, doesn't have to be the best thing in the industry, but I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you probably have the means to own a computer to record on. So I'm going to be assuming that here. I'm also going to be assuming that you have the instruments you want to record with, that you, if you're a guitar player, you own a guitar and you can record with a guitar. So I'm assuming that when building out this home studio. But what's the first thing you need when you begin building your home studio? The first thing you need is an audio interface. And what an audio interface is, it allows you to convert the analog signal, whether it's a microphone, a guitar pickup, into digital ones and zeros so that we can get into your computer and start playing with that audio. Back in the old days, it was all an analog. It was all recorded to tape and it was never converted through that digital process. But now that we do things in computers, there has to be a converter process that takes place where we get it into ones and zeros, something that your computer can read. And that's what an audio interface is for. What I'm going to recommend here is the Focusrite Scarlett Solo third generation. This is an incredibly affordable interface for $140. This is going to be the first piece in our home studio. It has two inputs. You can record guitars, microphones. You can run any DAW off it. If you're in Windows, you just need to download the drivers and you can get going. This is amazing, amazing interface. I own a copy right there. I'm using it right now. It's a super reputable company. That's the one I would go pick up, but also my home studio gear guide. I have plenty of other suggestions if you want to look at other brands. So next, if we're going to be recording anything that is not inside of the box. So if you're recording vocals, acoustic guitar, anything that requires a microphone, we're going to need a microphone in the home studio. So the thing I would go with, especially if you're a beginner, is a Shure SM57. This is an all around heavy duty microphone that just has stood the test of time and is really kind of a dummy proof microphone that you can use on anything. Thing. And it only costs $100 and microphones can get really, really expensive really quickly. And because it's a dynamic microphone, you don't have to worry as much about room noise or background noise. It can really handle all that. And so I would pick up a Shure SM57. But like I said, I have other beginner microphone recommendations in my home studio gear guide if you want to see what the other options are. But this is what I would start out with. It's great on vocals. It's great on guitar cabinets. People in the industry, pros, still use it on snare drums to this day. So this one has stood the test of time. It sounds great. It's gonna work for your recordings. I would pick that up and it's only $100. It fits your budget perfectly. So we're at about $250 right now. Let's move on to the next item in our home studio. Okay, that's great. We've got a microphone, we've got an interface, but how do we plug that microphone into the interface, right? I wanna cover everything in this video. You're gonna need something called an XLR cable. What that does is it allows you to connect your microphone directly into your interface. These run about $15. I wouldn't cheap out on this because you want something to kind of last, you know, uh, more than a couple of months or more than a year and not break easily or things like that. But for $15, $20, you can easily pick up a great XLR cable. It'll plug right into your interface and your microphone and you'll be good to go there. You won't have to mess with it. Get the length of cable that you need. If you need your microphone to be really far away from where you're sitting or where your interface is, get a longer cable. But if you're just gonna be recording vocals at your studio desk, then you might need just a five foot or 10 foot cable. So pick up what you need, but XLR cable, about 15, $20 we're gonna add to the budget, but it's a must have. We have to have this to begin recording. And then another thing people often don't think about is we're gonna need a mic stand. What are we gonna put that microphone on, right? I guess you could hold it in your hand, but when you're running recording software and then you're trying to hold it in your hand and record at the same time, it can kind of become a, a bit cumbersome. So I think it's really good that we have a mic stand because that way you could also mic up a snare drum, a drum kit, you can mic up your guitar amp with this mic stand. These run about $20, $25, depending on the size you're going for. If you want a full boom mic stand, that'll cost you know close to $25, $30. But if you want one of these that just attaches to your desk here and is a smaller one, that's closer to $20. But it's pretty much a must have in the home studio to have some form of mic stand. So I'd pick that up 
add that to your budget there. And by the way, I have recommendations and links for these products all in the description box if you wanna pick these up right away. Next, we're going to need some headphones in the studio. So we need a way to listen to the music we're actually creating. Now we could buy speakers or monitors, which I'll get into, which you can add onto the budget here, but you don't really need to go ultra expensive with your headphones. You just need something that you can learn. You're just gonna need something that can replicate the sound on a flat level. Commercial headphones are okay, but they tend to boost the lows and the highs for a more consumer experience. When you're in the studio, you want something with more of a flat response that shows you, hey, this is what your music is actually sounding like and not an enhanced version of it. For about $50, you can pick up any amazing you know, pair of headphones in the home studio. Yes, you can go way more expensive than that, but for starting out in the home studio, for, you know, for example, I still use a $20 Behringer pair of headphones. They're crappy and cheap, but I've learned them and they still work for me. But if you pick up a $50 pair, that's plenty. You'll be able to plug that right into your audio interface and then hear back whatever you're doing in your recordings. You can then record vocals while listening to it on your headphones and the bleed won't get into the microphone, especially on closed back headphones. They're just an all around necessity when you're recording, especially any live instruments. So I would pick up some headphones, I have some recommendations in my home studio gear guide, but that's gonna be close to about $50 in our budget when building out our home studio. And then the next thing we're gonna need that people often forget about is a pop filter. What is a pop filter? Well, when you say sounds like P's and B's, these plosive vowels as we call them, they create a lot of air and they can create a lot of input and spike in your microphone when you're recording. What the pop filter does, it filters out that extra air and keeps that extra air from getting on the microphone and causing your recordings to sound really amateur, if I'm being honest. So pop filters run about $10, they attach to your mic stand, so you can set up your mic stand with your microphone and your pop filter, boom, you've done, you're done. You have an amazing vocal recording set up right away, but it's kind of a necessity, especially if you're recording vocals, you're gonna need a pop filter. Everyone uses them. And so I would go ahead and pick that up. That's about $10 on the budget. So that's not gonna break the bank either. So we're actually close to $350. So you could stop there if you want that to be your home studio, pretty affordable and you have everything you need. But what if you want to go a little step further, you could actually buy a pair of studio monitors, which run close to $150 to $200, putting us around that $500 home studio mark. I'm using Personas Aries uh, 4.5s. They cost $200 for a pair. There's even cheaper speakers than that. If you get the Personas Aries 3.5s or 2.5s, they're smaller, but they're even cheaper. These can hook up right into your audio interface and you get zero latency feedback through the speakers of what you're recording. And if you don't want to spend all your time wearing headphones in the home studio and covering up your ears, you could also have these speakers as an option. I think these are really great. In my home studio gear guide, you get more recommendations on speakers you could pick up for an affordable price and you could go really, really expensive with this really quickly, obviously. But for a beginner situation, I would pick up something like the Personas Aries 3.5s, which are close to $150. And that's your $500 home studio and you have everything you need to begin recording. So I hope that video was helpful. We now have our home studio. We can now build out what we need to begin recording. I have an amazing series coming up on this channel that you're not gonna wanna miss. So you should hit the like and subscribe button because I'm going to build out and give you step-by-step -step directions on how to go from just a song idea in your head to building out a full arrangement, mixing, mastering, and releasing the song on a streaming service with song artwork, how to do that entire process here. I'm gonna outline that all on the channel for 100% free. You're not gonna wanna miss this series, especially if you're getting into recording or even if you're a seasoned pro and you just like a step-by-step -step process, you should definitely tune in to see that video series here. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions about building out your home studio, please leave a comment down below or if you have any amazing recommendations for people in the comments, I'd really like to hear what you guys have to say. I'd really like to help you guys out in the comments if you're building a home studio. It can be a daunting task at first if you're a beginner in this recording thing, but I'm here to help you out. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time and in that upcoming video series.